DJI, we need to chat. A couple of days ago, I made a video showing a fault with the DJI Neo in camera draw mode. And I received quite a few comments from people saying, well, lots of people would have recovered it in the way you did. You're nothing special. Why are you on your high horse? And I just wanted to address that first of all and say that I don't think that I'm better than anybody else whatsoever. I was just simply trying to convey the feelings, the thoughts and the emotions I'd had straight after having the incident that I'd had. And it's very easy to get caught up in an air accident by being overwhelmed by things. And the last thing that a lot of people are going to do is think, well, let's stop recording because that might release some memory somewhere. Um, most people are going to be like, well, let's keep it recording so we can, we can record the crash and we can see exactly what's happened later on. I don't think I'm any better. I just did things in a way that I did and I expressed things in the way I expressed them. And I wanted to get that point over the line, first of all. The second point I want to make is that people are leaving comments saying, well, what do you expect? You're flying a selfie drone in camera drone mode. You shouldn't be doing that. I had one comment that said, if you bought a sports car, it can do 200 miles an hour, but you wouldn't do that, would you? And I thought about that for a second and I thought, well, no, because that's illegal. And what I was doing with the DJI Neo was all within the parameters of A, the law and B, the operating instructions provided by DJI. There are sadly lots of DJI fanboys that will defend DJI regardless of what they do or what crap they put out there. The DJI Neo is innovative, but I think deeply flawed. I think it's at such a price point, but whilst being offered at such a usability stance that it's never really going to meet the expectations of the operator. The 4K, for example, is true 4K. However, the image is stabilized and the way the image is stabilized is by moving the image around as the drone moves and cutting off some of that resolution. So if you look at my FPV video, it actually looks like I'm getting bitrate breakup. I'm not getting bitrate breakup because that's the recording from the actual Neo itself. What's happening is the bitrate and the video is dropping to such a low resolution because I'm flying it so hard in FPV mode that it's, it's cutting so much of that video off in order to keep it stabilized. So there's point number one. Point number two, they're saying that you can do it in camera draw mode, you can do it in selfie mode, you can do it in motion controller mode, you can do it in mobile phone mode. And I think they're trying to make it too much of a jack of all trades and a master of none. On Friday, I put my DJI Neo into selfie mode. I gave it to my son and I said, all you need to do, just go into the field, press the button, I'll record from here. We'll get some nice footage of it basically tracking you in selfie mode. And as you can see from the video, the DJI Neo shoots straight up into the sky and flies away. Now, luckily, because the Neo is so slow, we was able to follow it. We was able to track it and we saw where it landed. Now, we didn't see exactly where it landed. It could have landed on a roof. It could have landed. Luckily, it landed underneath a caravan. And the way that we actually found it is we drove down the road where we knew it had landed and we had my son held the app, the DJI app. And as soon as we got near it, he said, Neo found connect to Neo. So we stopped the car, he pressed the button and then we saw on the display, on the camera feed, that it was underneath a caravan. If that had landed on a roof, we'd have, we'd have lost it forever. So we was really, really lucky. And again, the DJI fanboys can't now come back and say, well, it's only a camera drone, only use it in selfie mode. Sorry, it's only a selfie drone, only use it in selfie mode because that's what it was being used in. And this is where it did a flyaway. So then yesterday it, we had a, a new firmware release a new app release and obviously I've screen recorded it and I've put it on the screen to show you that we did the update. We're now fully up to date. And I then flew the Neo for about 15 minutes in camera draw mode and I flew it hard in order to try and make it, basically to try and recreate the issues that we had. And obviously I was ready to 
disarm it at a moment's notice. I flew it over an empty field. There was nobody in the field. And obviously it wasn't around houses and things. So we knew if there was a problem, the worst case scenario is it was going to hit the deck. And actually it performed really well. There's a few times where we get a strong wind warning. And again, I know what I'm doing. I know that I'm pushing it beyond the limits. So if something had have happened whilst I had the strong wind warning, that would have been my fault. No problems at all. Towards the very end of the flight, I brought it down and I took a little video of my kids sat on the fence and then it death spiraled out of control, disarmed and hit the ground. There is an inherent problem with the DJI Neo and DJI need to look at this. And finally, what I want to say is one of the comments I received is, well, you're a sample size of one. This is what you're basing it on. And I did get a reply to that comment from somebody who said exactly what I was thinking. Yes, it's a sample size of one. But as with all these things, if you have a problem, until the first person raises that problem, other people don't know that it's a problem. Especially with the Neo, which is aimed more at the beginner end of the market. I've seen some comments and I've seen some videos whereby people are thinking, oh, this is just me because I'm a beginner and I don't really know how to, to fly it properly. This incident that's happened is my lack of skill or my lack of understanding. When in truth, it's not. Sure, there is going to be some of them. I'm not saying all of them, but there are some that's not. So yes, it was a sample size of one. But as with all these things, the first person to speak out then gives confidence to other people. And sure, I might have lost any opportunity I ever had of working with DJI. I'm ambitious in the sector. I'm ambitious in the fact that I want to be the best that I can. I want to work with Red Bull. I want to work with DJI. I want to work with Autel and every other drone manufacturer and camera manufacturer out there because that's what I do. But I think it's more important to make a video like this to highlight the flaws and be part of the problem, uh, sorry, be part of the solution rather than be part of the problem. And I have no issues with any influencers who do work with DJI and that have turned a blind eye if they've had this issue, because that's the pressure that sometimes you do get put under. And that's the pressure that I got put under last year when I first started doing this. And that's why I flipped the whole channel to say, look, we're only going to do honest reviews. I'm only going to review things honestly. You know, I panned the Darwin FPV, I've panned other drones, I panned the Flywoo. I will always give an honest review of something because this is your money at the end of the day. It'd probably be more beneficial to me to tell you that this is the best thing ever to drop an affiliate link. I do have a DJI affiliate link. Like I say, drop the affiliate link, get the affiliate sales cash and fly off into the sunset. But I've got morals and... I'm not happy with doing that. So whilst I know that I'm going to get a lot more DJI fanboys again, telling me how wrong I am, how by flying it to the manufacturer specifications, I'm doing it wrong or by flying it with the accessories that DJI sell it with. I think if we buy the goggles three, the RCN two, the FPV controller three and the motion controller and the DJI Neo, you're in it for about a thousand quid thousand dollars thousand euros but the fanboys say that you shouldn't fly it that way after spending all that money and that's a real problem we need to be open and honest and have this discourse mads tech left a comment and he is one of my youtube heroes of all time he's constantly on dji for issues that they have he's currently looking at the issue of the dji 03 and the goggles 3 losing signal mid-flight randomly and not reconnect him. So please do go and give him a look, give him a subscribe, let him know that I've sent you. Hopefully one day I can be at the level of Mads Tech. But right now I'm focused on trying to hold DJI to account for the Neo faults, whatever there may be. Mads Tech said that it seems to use the same logic board, the same processor, um, but the issue could well be that they're using a different antenna. Again, Mads Tech, rips all this stuff apart physically, has a look at it, finds out where the problems are and reports it to DJI who probably don't even reply to him to be fair because he's not replied to my ticket yet either. So I'm not, not quite sure what's going on. I haven't made a massive deal of the crash because um, I'm sure somebody somewhere is going to tell me that that was probably my fault for flying it or something 
or the the flyaway i'm sure was probably my fault for flying it um but i do know that the majority of you who come and watch this video are here because you've either got an issue or you're willing to listen to both sides of the argument rather than just be fanboys dj fanboys i'll see you in the comments and i'll enjoy debating with you everybody else let me know if the new firmware has helped for you has it fixed any of the problems that you previously had has it caused any other new problems let me know in the comments down below and if you could just drop a subscription that'd be brilliant in the meantime peace